The inspiration for the book came from a true life horror story. They just mocked him. In 2008, a 14-year-old California boy, Larry King, was shot by a classmate after he asked him to be his valentine. Larry was gay. He wore makeup and girls' boots to school. Raziel Reed was 18 when he started writing When Everything Feels Like the Movies. Jude thinks real life should be more like the movies. It's about a flamboyant, fashion-loving, celebrity, and sex-obsessed teenage boy. And let's just say the book doesn't skimp on the sex. At first, it didn't get too much attention. The controversy began when he won the Governor General's Award for Children's Literature and its $25,000 prize. Hello, minions. Thank you for coming to my Illuminati initiation ceremony. Reed had fun accepting the award in the voice of the character in his book. The queen is recognizing the queen. It's about time. A National Post journalist called it a values void novel, and an online petition began to have him stripped of the prize. His book began flying off the shelves. I caught up with the author, Raziel Reed, at this Toronto bookshop last week in, of course, the children's section. Tell me, what inspired you to write this? Well, I first heard about Larry's murder when I was in high school, and um, it, it, it struck me, of course, as, as a gay teen, because I, I was not as brave as, as Larry. I thought he was such a star, and that's how Jude sort of evolved into uh, a starlet, because Larry had star qualities. He was, he was brave, he was himself, he was, he was out there. Um, he was seen, he was visible, and, and I, in a way that I wasn't. I was shy and I sort of hid that part of myself because I was afraid of exposing my truth. So I realized that, you know, had I been as brave as, as Larry, it, it could have cost me my life. And that's a pretty horrifying and daunting thing to sort of sit with. You watched it on the, the Ellen Show. Ellen the DeGeneres. Ellen, yeah. The Ellen DeGeneres Show. For a minute, I need to talk to you about something that's really serious and really sad. She uh, usually starts her show by dancing and giving a funny monologue, but she just uh, sat down and looked into the camera and said, I, I'm not a second-class citizen, Larry's not a second-class citizen. It was very powerful. Larry was killed because he was gay. Days before he was murdered, Larry asked his killer to be his valentine. How hard was it for you in, in high school? High school wasn't bad, junior high was bad. I think that's sort of the toughest time for, for teens. Um, grade six to grade eight was, was really hard. I mean, I used to go home crying every day in grade six uh, because I was getting uh, attacked for, for, for being gay. So you were bullied? Yeah. And did you come out in junior high? I didn't. I sort of uh, evolved into, into my sexuality. In high school, I came out to my friends as bisexual and then finally as gay. And, and when I was 18, I came out to my family. So you were okay by the time you got to high school? Yeah, I, I sort of, you know, everyone was sort of doing their own thing, so it wasn't as bad. But uh, in, in junior high, everyone's sort of pushed together and you're, you're experiencing the adult world for the first time. So you're taking things to uh, a more extreme place than ever before. Like I look back at things that I did when I was 14 or 15 and I would never do that now. Um, but ba back then it's, it's all happening uh, now and it's, it's, it's exciting and it's new. And, and so um, you're a bit more daring. And that's why I put the book, set the book in, in junior high, um, because there really is no boundary. They're, they're setting the boundary. Reed's book tells the story of Jude and describes his sexual fantasies and acts in extremely graphic detail. Um, I'm just trying to get my head around this whole desire by Jude, and maybe by you, I don't know you that well, <laughs> to shock, you know? And then I'm wondering, are you shocking because it's fun, because you want to be, or be because you're pissed off? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm being sh purposely shocking and provocative because I think youth are purposely shocking and provocative, uh, especially this generation, um, Generation Y, with, with the internet. Um, the more outrageous you are, the more attention you get, the more followers you get, the more likes you get, and that's all that they care about. Um, 
you know, when their likers on Instagram click the, the heart emoticon next to their picture, filling it red, that's the new heartbeat. So they have to be in increasingly shocking to get more likes. And um, I think that comes through in their language. They're just detached from, from sex in a way that no other generation ever has been. They're living behind a screen, so it's not uh, penetrating uh, <laughs> uh, in the same way that it is for, for that it was for other generations. There was a bit of backlash. Well, actually, a big backlash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you think? I mean, here is another children's author saying that you lack morals, that it's vulgar, that it's sh that the prize should be rescinded. So I was okay with the headlines, but um, you know, in all seriousness, I I was thankful for for the controversy because I think it highlighted prejudice that still exists in, in Canada. Um, you know, as a nation that uh, legalized same-sex marriage in two thousand and five, we think that equality is a given, but it we still have a long way to go. Well, I guess the, just to play devil's advocate here, I, I guess the, the pushback was why did this win the Governor General's Award for children's literature? It's, it is vulgar. I mean, it is. He's vulgar. Mm -hmm. But um, so is the generation Y. So is the generation that I'm depicting. I'm not, I'm not promoting um, any kind of uh, behavior. I'm, I'm just describing it. It is very raw. It reads a little bit. I hope bit. so, yeah. I'm trying to... Uh, it's a uh, little bit like porn parts of it though I mean you describe it oh hardly and, really I'm just I would hardly call it porn <laughs> well that's it's, shocking it's, to me it's, that, no, it's, it's soft porn no it's not that's hugely offensive really? it's not yes it is that's it's not but you porn. describe anal sex in great detail and that's porn and, well, people have sex teens have sex but porn is just sex isn't it uh, but I'm not describing it in great deal, and I'm not doing it gratuitously. I'm not doing it to turn people on. It's not Fifty Shades of Grey or Fifty Shades of Gay, as, as some of the columnists have, have called it. Um, it's just teen sex. There's been sex in, in books, you know, since there but have been books. Read, but we don't read descriptions like that. We don't read gay in, descriptions of that. Or, 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 even, or even non-gay descriptions of that in children's books that win the Governor General's Award. I mean, this is, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you wrote. It's, it's actually really well written, I think. It's just that it, it won the award. That's what's created the, the controversy, I think. <laughs> Well, Maybe there, it's not th just that. I think there's a long history of sex in young adult books. I don't think that there's a long history of gay sex in young adult books, and perhaps that's the difference. Do you think that that's, that is the way that, that kids talk about, I don't know, all Of course the time? it is. They're desensitized to sex because this is a generation that's growing up with porn on their phone. So it's not like I'm writing about anything that they haven't already watched or experienced themselves. Um, and, and I think the vulgarity and, and sort of uh, explicitness of, of their language is a result of how desensitized they are to sex. It's, it's not true intimacy for them. Uh, true intimacy is a touch or a hug or something that we would think of as, as much uh, simpler or, or, or tamer. Um, that's something that I think they're more uncomfortable with than the, the rawness and, and sort of um, uh, graphicness of, of sex. What would have happened if there'd been a book like that when you were in junior high? Um, I, I really feel that if I had had an, a voice as brave and, and sort of out there and proud and unapologetic as Jude on my bookshelf, maybe I would have come out sooner and not had as much shame. Is there still shame? Because in Canada, you know, we like to think we're so cool. <laughs> Anyone can get married here. Well, that's the thing. We, I think we've sort of, um, we think that because gay marriage was legalized in 2005 that there's no more work to do, but beneath the unified veneer there is still uh, um, discrimination. Gay kids are, are contemplating suicide, attempting suicide um, on a daily basis. I mean, I, I wrote for a gay newspaper for years and I uh, ran a blog for them and I was constantly writing about teen suicide. Did you ever think about that? I attempted suicide when I was 15, yeah. I, uh, I tried to kill myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good God. Because <laughs> of the bullying? Yeah. But I mean, this is not an uncommon story. Oh. Like, I, 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 in the gay community, we sort of have this joke, like everyone seems to have a sob story. Everyone was bullied. Um, it, it's, it's just, a, it's trite, really, at this point. What is the barrier you want to break down? 
Well, I think um, what's really important is is that anyone who's different, it's not just a gay issue, it's, it's really about identity. Anyone who doesn't fit into a box has a really difficult time in, in the school system and, and in society. We don't really understand um, people who are different, and I, I hope that, that Jude can can create some understanding. And um, also I want to bridge, a, bridge the gap between generations who don't understand what Generation Y is, is facing. Well, I think it's an important book. Thank you. Yeah, it was lovely to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much. You.